Hey, Brian and Rachel Goulet here of GouletPens.com, and it's a special treat to have Rachel on the Goulet Q&A this week. I mean, you know, I'm here. Why not? Everybody keeps, <laughs> everybody keeps talking about leaving comments saying how much they love Rachel. Of course, I'm a fan. So Thanks. she was able to free up a little bit of time today. Um, we're talking I about... I really like platinum pens. Yeah. I think they're gorgeous and I love them and I just want to talk about them. Well, and we got a lot of questions too that were a lot of like logistical kind of inventory related questions. That's really her wheelhouse. Um, so I thought we could, you know, tag team this together today. Yeah, see how it goes. It's gonna be great. I mean, come on. We got I mean, a lot of good questions. Um, it's gonna be exciting. So let's cover just some of the stuff that we've been up to in the last week. Yeah. Uh, and then we can get into the questions that we received. Um, so we got a few things going on here. Um, I always give a little update, you know, just kind of let everybody know yeah, what's got, happening. Yeah, got some people ins and outs here at Goulet headquarters. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of the ins that we have is uh, Jeremy is going to be starting with us next week. We're really excited. He's really excited to come on board. He's joining our customer care team. He just um, had a baby, second, his second. Yes. So yes. he's going to be all sleep deprived and it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be We've really exciting. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we're excited about that. Um, and then on a sad note, Katie, who's been with us for a year and a half now, mm -hmm. she's on our customer care team. She is uh, she's going to be fabulous. On. And you know, I know a lot of you have built relationships with her. Um, she's she's fantastic, and we're gonna we're seriously gonna miss her so much. She's moving to another state. You know, go start another phase of her personal life. So yeah, so you know. it's, we're really gonna miss her. We love you, Katie, but that's okay. Life goes on. Um, we've also um, just launched the premiere, the summer edition, um, the Caribbean, Caribbean sea. sea. Edison Nouveau premiere. We're excited about that one. It's a bright kind of turquoise, really cool. We're just it, very summer. It, yeah, very summer. It's actually yeah, it's not too far off from the it's shirt. It's like in between. A little less green than the shirt. It's like in between. Um, yeah, so we're like all ready for summer here. <laughs> um, and then uh, speaking of summer, we just um, had Father's Day this past weekend, which yeah. you know was a lot of fun. I got together with my parents. Um, you know, and, six of uh, us went to, uh, Kings, to Kings Dominion, Dominion, which is like 10 minutes up the road. Uh, Brian used to go all the time as a kid. His mom would take him. So it was really cool for, uh, to go with our kids and your parents. And they had all these like trippy flashbacks to bring in. <laughs> so they're seeing their grandkids at the same age that you guys were when you used to bring them. So right. brought our kids to the water park. So they got, you know, a little six inch deep you know, splash area, so they, you know, first a little timid, but yeah, getting used to but the they whole really, water thing. They really loved it. I was like, it's really like the bathtub, it. but you're allowed to splash each other. Yeah, know? it took them a good, like, 20 minutes to really warm uh, up to the concept. water's a little chilly. Yeah, but, but they, they, we, we had a hard time getting them to leave, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. That was good. And I got to ride Intimidator 305. With your which, dad. With my dad. And my dad, you know, my dad just turned 60 this past year. 30, and that, 60. That, yeah. rolled, that ride, seriously. Intimidator is no joke. It's got like a 300 foot drop, almost uh, almost vertical. Yeah. I haven't yeah. ridden it yet. I'm, we're going to go back on a date it's night or intense. something to do it. It's intense. It's really intense. It's and I the, like roller coasters. It's called the Intimidator. What did you expect? I, like, I mean, <laughs> I just expected it to be called Intimidator you and just, then be like a cool roller coaster. But it was seriously intense. You also haven't ridden a roller coaster since like pre-kids. That's been true. We've been to Disney World, but like, no, you that's know, not, that's not like a real Thunder Mountain coaster. is not exactly no, a roller coaster. No, no, no. You know? I say you're, but you haven't <laughs> experienced roller coasters as a 30 year old. That's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but that aside, it's an intense roller coaster. Anyway, that so, great. so that was a lot of fun. So that's kind of what we've been up to personally. Um, but we got a lot of good questions for this week, so we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, the first one here is going to be pretty comprehensive. Um, sh uh, sh at Shreddy Eddie on I've, Twitter. I got a lot of pens out. You can't see it on the desk now. I got almost one of everything to show. Yeah. So um, this, I like playing pens. Yes. So at Shreddy Eddie on Twitter said, I'm considering picking up a platinum fountain pen in the near future. Would you be able to quickly go over their lineup? Awesome vids. Uh, cool. Um, well, that's a heck of a question you got in there in 140 yeah, characters. Yeah, the lineup but is <laughs> the lineup's a little nuts. We've had it's been interesting trying to figure out how to present it on our website. There's all these collections and sub collections, and mm -hmm. uh, based on the type of finish, you know, uh, you know, we're working to figure out how to how to streamline that that a little bit. We picked up yeah. uh, a wider range of platinum last summer just to kind of dabble, see how it did. It's you know, we never really fully featured it. We're probably due to do some like feature videos. Yeah, yeah, and that's the, well, that's part of why. Like the Century is a fantastic pen. I think it's a bit underrated. It's it's in the mm -hmm. same price point as a lot of other popular pens. Yeah, and there's some unique things going on with Platinum's pens, which is part of the reason why we wanted to feature it this week in the Q and A was to really kind of you showcase know the show, line. Sh yeah showcase what is actually a really really cool line of pens. Well, let's start at the the cheap end and work yep. our way up. So, so pretty much everybody's familiar with the Platinum Preppy. 
Um, it's a $4 pen. It's just a solid pen. It's, it's a great starter pen. You get them free in several of the Noodler's four and a half ounce ink mm -hmm. bottles, which I think is where a lot of people get exposed to them first. Yeah. They're easily convertible to an eyedropper. A little bit they're of cheap. silicone grease and O-ring. We reliable. actually just measured this morning three and a half milliliters. I mean, that's a lot of ink. That's like almost two ink samples. That's a lot of ink in a little pen like that. Um, it's got a well-sealed cap, so it's just, you know, it's it's reliable. It starts up well. It's not super smooth. I mean, um, it's a $4 pen, so. Most of the, huh. well, most of the platinum pens actually are not super smooth. I think that's kind of like their thing. They're, they're very kinda, stiff. They're toothy and stiff. That's kind of their deal. Um, but these but pens. They're solid. Yeah, they're just reliable writers. The um, preppy you can also get in a highlighter or a marker tip. So basically you can use fountain pen ink, but it has kind of like a foam chisel tip. So the marker is like a little bit thinner and the highlighter is more of like a, a fatter chisel tip. So you can, right. and then they make several different inks so you can use as highlighter inks. Newlers mm -hmm. has a whole highlighter line. Um, so that's pretty cool to use fountain pen ink in a highlighter marker format. Yeah. So that's the preppy. Um, it's a uh, grown up brother, if you will, is the plazier. Uh, the Plazier has the same nib, um, same setup as the Preppy. It just has a nicer aluminum body. Uh, comes in, I think, 10 different colors. Um, you know, nice shiny aluminum. You can't convert it to an eyedropper because of the aluminum. Right. So you'll want to use a cartridge or a converter in here. But this is around 20 bucks, low 20s. If you really like, um, the, way the, if you really like the way the Preppy writes and you just want something that's a little more durable, looks a little nicer for the office classier, or this, this would be your ticket. Um, let's see, then we have the Platinum Cool and the Platinum Balance. I know we've done some videos on these. Uh, they're basically the Cool, well the Balance came first, um, solid color, gold trim. Uh, then they came out with the Cool, I believe last year, which basically translucent um, demonstrator version, mm -hmm. has silver trim instead of gold. Um, it's around the 40 to $50 price point. Um, the nib has a little bit of spring to it, so that's kind of cool. Um, also a cartridge converter. Actually, every single platinum pen is a cartridge converter. I don't think they have yeah. any piston fillers in their lineup. Uh, not that I'm aware. So they're all cartridge converter and they all, it's all proprietary. So you have to use the platinum converter or platinum cartridges. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the balance, the cool, it's, it's a pretty cool pen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can't resist saying that, you know. I mean, it just, it comes out. So this is a relatively new addition to the line, but um, it's, it's actually one of our favorites among our customer care team. Yeah. I think several of them have it as their daily writer and prefer to actually writing thank you I mean, notes it's, it's with it right great, now. It's great in that like kind of mid price range. The nib, you know, I wouldn't call it a flex nib, but it's, it's soft enough where spring. you can get some flex when you want to. Like just if you want to embellish your signature a little bit, you know, if you're yeah. trying to do like full flex all day long, it's probably gonna, like it's a little, it's a little, it's a little stiff for that, but you know, you can, it's definitely got some, some line variation to it when you want it. Um, one thing I did want to mention, uh, I was talking about the proprietary cartridges and converters. Oh, Actually, right. you know what? That's it's not a question. It's coming a later question. I'll save it. Now you all can wonder what I'm talking about. Um, there's, uh, keeping on the lower price point, there's a couple brush pens. Mm -hmm. Again, these take fountain pen ink, but it has a brush tip so you can get, you know, super fine or, you know, get the, the thickness. This is uh, the cheapest one. Comes a little carded thing. It's the carbon brush pen. It's all in Japanese, but mm -hmm. trust me, that's what it is. And that one's really not so much a brush pen, more as it is like a felt tip pen. A flexible felt. It's really not like separate brush fibers. No, no, this one's it's more, more felt. It's more like a marker. But it's it's super cheap. So if you're like, I've never tried a brush pen before, I wonder what it's like. You just want something you know pretty cheap to try out. That's yeah, your best bet. That's an option. Once you've kind of mastered that, there's a couple options for you. They have, um, again, these are like the forty to fifty dollar price range. A couple uh, maquille. It's kind of like a screen print maquille. Yeah. I mean, for forty bucks. It's not it's true, not, like hand painted maquille, but it's it's you know screen printing, but still kind of cool design. This has um, the white brush, so you know. A fibrous tip. Yeah. Fibrous tip. Um, so there's a couple different maquille patterns there. And then there's a marble version, comes in a couple colors. This one has weasel hair as the tip, which I don't know, for someone who's not like familiar with brush pens, it sounds kind of bizarre, but I guess it's a it's just that, ideal yeah, hair Yeah, that hair texture. is really good for a brush tip. It's very soft. We're not like brush pen connoisseurs here, but. If you're looking to dabble, you know, and you like fountain pen ink and you want just a little extra flair mm -hmm. or, you know, I don't know. It's also good for practicing certain, you know, other language characters. Yeah, a lot of artists like brush pens because you can use it to kind of get uh, different, you know, pull different colors out of the ink and stuff like well, that. Well, you can put some water in it and kind of, you know, 
water wash your artwork? Sure. Yeah. There's also the <laughs> desk pen, uh, which I don't have in front of me, but it's mm -hmm. an extra fine nib. Uh, and it's, it's really extra fine. Really super extra fine. It, yeah. It's very affordable. It's what, like 12 bucks? 12 50 12 I think. $12.50, something like $12, that. $12, yeah. Um, we also have like a, a base that it can fit in. So if you don't want to mm -hmm. keep it capped, you basically take the cap off and it fits into the base. It like yeah, kind of sits on like your you, desk. Yeah, kind of like you have a bank teller, you know? Yeah, without the chain. Right. <laughs> put a chain on it if you want. I guess. But if you really, really like extra fine, and it's made to be used with the carbon ink, so like pigmented mm -hmm. inks, it'll, the, even though it's extra fine, it'll hold up well, mm -hmm. I guess, flow-wise. Yeah, I guess wise. they fatten that feed or something to make it feed through, yeah. But yeah, it's still a super fine tip. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Um, I talked about the cool and the balance. So then we get to some of the, I'll call it more the flagship or more the, uh, yeah. more the well-known. So there's sure. the 3776, which yeah, that's like that number is significant. Mm -hmm. It's the metered height of Mount Fuji. Yes. All right. Which, which is, is the tallest mountain in Japan. Which is where platinum is made, if you yes. were not familiar. Um, you know, the base model is black. Um, it also comes in a couple other colors they released in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. There's the Bourgogne, which is a <coughs> translucent, it's a deep burgundy, yeah, a deep burgundy like a wine, mm. um, it wine really red. Good. It is. It's, it's got some translucent, so you can kind of see through it. And then there's also the Chartreux Bleu, oh, which is uh, kind of for the stained glass cathedral thing. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's that Goulet Blue. It's it's perfect. It's beautiful. <laughs> Technically, it's Chartreux Blue, but. Chart <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. It's it's that color. They came the, first. The of, course, of course. I'm just saying it's it's very fitting. Yeah. Um, so this is their gold. This is where the gold nibs start. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be in the uh, upper 150 to 200. I want to say yeah. 176. List is yeah. 220 as of the time of this video. Yeah. Um, and these pens, they're gold nibs, um, but they're stiff nibs. So sometimes you people most of them associate are stiff. sometimes well, most of them. Sometimes people associate uh, gold with softness, flexibility, stuff like that. Not that always. is not the case with these pens. They do not design them that way. It's not a flaw or anything like that. They're amazingly consistent, but they are stiff. That's just how they like them. Now the 3776 has been around for a while. Then they came out with the 3776 Century, which mm -hmm. basically introduced a slip and seal cap, which is also some of the same technology they have on the Plazier. Basically, it has mm -hmm. a fantastic seal so that your ink won't dry out in the pen. They advertise up to two years, which is, that's a long time. A I mean, some of us that's... forget to clean out our pens from time to time and find it, you know, a year or two later. And I got a whole bucket of pens over there <laughs> that I need to clean out right I lost now. a Schaefer Prelude from like the DC Pen Show in 2010. I didn't find it for two years. It had Bay State Cranberry in it, but it, it eventually cleaned out. It did, it took some work. I mean, Bay, Bay States take a little extra work too, just to right. make matters worse. I think it fell behind the sofa or it was in a bin or something. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so they feature the cap to keep the ink from drying out. They mm -hmm. come in a huge range of nib sizes. Yeah. Some uh, haven't made their way fully into the U.S. yet. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. um, but it's 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 very underrated. The whole pen line, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's. I think most people just either haven't heard about it, or I'm not quite sure. But it's, I mean, it's got a lot of positive reviews. I, I mean, people that actually buy them and use them love them. Again, the stiff nib, you know, a little bit too might yeah, not be for everybody. Exactly, you got to know what you're getting into. But yeah, it's not gonna be like scratchy to the point that you're like no. I can't write with this it's more like you get more feedback like you feel your writing versus like oh this right. is butter and I'm kind of like more it's kind of like more like writing a pencil kind of like the graphite like you feel it on the page more so than you would with like a pilot pen for example which somebody asked about that in a future question so we'll get to that in a minute they also have um, the president line uh, we don't currently we don't have this, this on our site but we you know we can special order anything yeah. platinum really um, it's a bit bigger it's got you know a bigger, got nib, a bigger nib to it and the nib um, has kind of this cool, um, like, Art Deco type design like on it. Like a two-tone it. Yeah, thing. it's kind of neat. Um, okay. Writes similarly to... 18 karat. Um, yeah, 18 karat instead of 14 karat nib. So, um, if not that that really matters, a tremendous deal, because they write pretty similarly. But compared um, to the 3776, it's a little bit, yeah. a little bit bigger. It's a little not bit bigger. as popular. The price is, is kind of a significant jump. You're looking a couple hundred. Yeah, so for that reason, we don't carry it. It's a good pen. Not at this time, but, but yeah. you know, we can always get one if you want one. Sure, I mean, I've got one and I like it. Um, still around that $200 price point are some of the modern Machie pens. Mm -hmm. So Platinum, um, you know, there's a couple other brands too, like, you know, Pilot and Amiki. 
they have a whole range of maquillé pens. So, Brian, what is maquillé for those who aren't familiar, Mr. Yeah, Craftsman? Yeah, um, maquillé is a tech. It's essentially a technique of hand painting lacquer, um, and you can do all kinds of like gold dust and sparkly, fleckly kind of stuff. Um, but Shells, true, engraving, yeah, all true maquillé is an is a Japanese craft that takes like decades to be able to master. Like, I got mad respect for maquillé artists. Um, but these ones are not like 100% hand, hand painted. These are, the, the modern maquillé have a combination of screen printing and hand work. Yeah. Um, they have a gold nib. Uh, these actually have a bit of spring to them. Uh, they remind me a lot of the cool or the balance, yeah. but in gold. Right. These are uh, 18 karat. Yeah, so some, they're going to be they're going to be some fairly soft nibs. You can get some flexibility to them. Oh, it's going to be that. not quite as flexible as like a Namiki Falcon would be, but close. So the modern maquillé is the the lowest. Then you get to the Kanazawa leaf, and this actually that refers to the gold leaf process. Mm -hmm. This one actually has leaves on it, so it's kind of fitting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you can read all about it on Platinum's website. Um, they have an English version, so you, well, know, another, if you go to Platinum Japan's website. But it's, another uh, thing too about these ones, I mean, there's several different designs of the Kanazawa leaf, but the reason they're more expensive than the modern maquillé is the modern maquillé doesn't have any maquillé design on the cap. Oh, well, that's true. The Kanazawa leaf has it on the whole pan they cap do. and body. So it's just a little bit fancier, a little bit more impressive, especially if you see them. Um, I actually, when I was, back when a couple of years ago, when I was doing all the photography, I was gear getting into macro photography and I went nuts with these pens, taking pictures of these. So we've got some really good macro photography that shows um, this maquillé stuff. Absolutely. Then you start getting into <coughs> then you all get into kinds the big of big boys. Well, we can keep talking maquillé. So, like this is one we have. It's called the Galaxy Maquillé. Mm. And this one you're looking, you know, so cool. We're starting to get into the five hundred to thousand dollar price point. But this one has it, it's you know I'll call it like uh, it reminds me of the Raiden, like a vanishing point. It's yeah. tons of little tiny shells that have all been inlaid and then you know all the different lacquer mm -hmm. and work yeah it's a little abalone top. shell right that's um kind of embedded in the lacquer it's gorgeous you just like i'll just you know stare <laughs> at this for a while it's very sparkly it's got a lot of depth to it looks really really cool got the 3776 nib on it mm -hmm. um just absolutely stunningly beautiful yeah it's ah oh, i I want one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Then we have, there are some ebonite versions. This is the Jupiter marble. So ebonite is mm -hmm. a natural hard rubber. This one's mm -hmm. got a uh, red red and black swirl pattern to it. I don't know how natural I would say ebonite is. It's manufactured. but Yeah, but it's made from elements of nature. Sure. <laughs> Technically everything is, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> so ebonite, which is pretty cool. It, mm hmm has that rubbery smell? Yeah, it, it smells like ebonite. It like feels tires. like ebonite. Yeah, highly polished. Uh, then you have uh, cellul. Oh, well, like let me let me skip to this one. This is this is a big oh, mama yeah. jama here. This is a limited edition that just came out. This is list price twelve hundred. This is stunningly beautiful. I can't even begin to appreciate the layers That's where you're of craftsmanship that get in here. Yeah. A hand painted just hours and layers and layers and layers of just it's I, I don't even have words you just you just have to look at the pictures it's mm -hmm. it's stunning yeah. we'll have to do some videos to really showcase this it's, yeah we will we're getting there they're gorgeous this one uh features the the president nib on there so good old big nib to go with the big pen yeah um, last year they came out with this King of Tigers maquillé, mm -hmm. which I was reading about this online, just the process for how they did this. I was like, oh, it's just like a black matte finish. It doesn't seem like that big a deal. Talking about how the craftsman literally has to hold his breath while applying the super fine like dust, basically. Dust, basically. To get this matte finish. Because if he breathes, then it could blow things out of, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. And it's, it's a very subtle pattern, got some ruthenium trim. Uh, you know, this is a limited uh, collector's edition mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Then you get into celluloid. Celluloid, um, they don't really make a lot of pens out of this anymore because it's actually incredibly hazardous to produce. It is. Um, it was a it was a kind of a derivative prior to modern plastics that came out. So mm -hmm. back in the early 1900s, they had ebonites and stuff like that, but they didn't really have any plastics. Celluloid was an attempt at plastic um, that was you know kind of hazardous to produce, and it was very kind of a, it's kind of a fickle material. Sometimes it comes out right, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so it's a very expensive material. 
but yeah. it's really gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is based on, we have a celluloid collection. So these are based on the 3776. Um, so the reason they're more expensive is, again, celluloid is just that incredibly difficult material to produce to get right. Um, you know, it has to cure for six months in order to, not, you know, make sure it won't fall apart or mm -hmm. dissolve or something. I'm not quite sure all the details. Yeah. Uh, but these are absolutely gorgeous. And then you have this this one we've done some really cool photographs with, mm -hmm. uh, the Caracusa. It's a celluloid base with hand-carved, like, and like it's an arabesque pattern, I think. If you, it's like kind of like a vine with leaves and stuff, hand yeah. carved and then hand painted, so mm -hmm. like inlaid with the the silver paint. Yeah, if you just are glancing at the pictures, it might just seem like it's some kind of screen printing or something, but it's not. It's actually like a three dimensional carved texture. And you can you can kind of feel. It. I mean, they they filled in with the paint and stuff. But you can feel the texture. Yeah. So just the fact that it's done by hand, it just. It, then you start understanding why the pricing is the way it is. And it looks awesome. <laughs> so there's a lot more. Um, I don't have everything here. Yeah, they um, have a lot more of this, especially this higher end kind of stuff. They've got some like sterling silver stuff. They've got all, lots all kinds of more macchiators. All kinds of uh, other celluloids and macchiators. Yurushi finishes. Yeah. That's, that, it's, it's incredible, the craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's where platinum really shines. Um, they make mm -hmm. good solid nibs, and then it's the craftsmanship of the ancient Japanese tradition that they bring in. Yeah, very cool stuff. So glad we were able to give you a little bit of a summary there. Now you get to... Next question. <laughs> have all these pens sitting in front of oh, the rest of the time. I, I know. Uh, so next question we've got um, from JOC, uh, asked a comment on Ink Nouveau. I'm thinking about getting a Platinum 3776 as my first nice fountain pen. I use a Safari and a Metro now. Hey, those are nice. Yeah, but, you know. they're fantastic beginner entry level pens. Yeah, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, two questions. What nib size would be closest to a Metropolitan Fine? Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and address that. Um, I looked up on the nib nook. I didn't like ink up both pens specifically after your question and compare them, but it's looking like the extra fine is actually going to be closest to the Metropolitan the Fine. The Metro Fine is very fine. It really kind of is. They're both Japanese, so they're going to be yeah. kind of close. And, you know, honestly, with these, between the extra fine and fine on the 3776, it's not a night and day difference, you know, but you've got an ultra extra fine in the 3776. So if you really want to go fine, that's what you do. Um, but, however, the difference between the extra fine and fine is not as drastic as it is perhaps on some other pen models. You could probably go with either and I think you'd be you'd be satisfied. Yeah. Um, so you can check out the nib nook. That's a writing comparison that we've done with every nib that we have. Um, your next question was how smoothly does the 3776 write? Is this going to feel like a big enough step up to justify the cost? For what it's worth I mostly take notes intermittently rather than write full paragraphs or pages. Um, so this is one of those things where some people associate the more money you spend on a pen, the smoother it's going to write. That is not necessarily going to be the case. Um, I think generally when you're on the really low end of pens, you can expect that they might be scratchy or not feel good when they write. And so you associate, oh, if I spend more money on a pen, it'll have better quality control, they'll have spent more time smoothing it, and so on. Well, qu quality control definitely will be there. It will, but I think like in terms of scratchiness and stuff, so I do want to say like these pens are not scratchy. Like I almost never hear about a quality issue with these pens being scratchy, but they are not like super glassy smooth. It's not like the more money you spend on these, the smoother it's going to feel and you'll just, you know, slip off the page. It's so smooth. Right. They intentionally, not everybody wants that. They intentionally grind these to have a little bit of tooth if you want to, or feedback. That's sometimes what it's called. So it's so that you, you can feel, you feel the paper. It, you feel the nib on the page. It's, um, it's kind of like when you're driving, like in certain cars, like I don't know, what is it, suspension or something? Yeah, like a really tight suspension on a car. Yeah. You're going to feel, you, you might feel the bumps a little bit more, but it's going to feel really you tight feel while you're driving. You touch it's with the like road that. versus a car that you're like really sitting up. He's like, oh, I feel like I'm driving this like airplane boat. Yeah, airplane boat. <laughs> Interesting. The excursion we used to have was like that. We did. I, we drove a Ford excursion for a little bit. Um, it was with part my, of his when I was power working on my dad's power washing we, business. We the never would was, have bought it out. The thing was jacked up like 10 inches <laughs> and it had oversized tires. And literally, that thing you felt like when you were you getting felt like on, you're on the runway. When you were getting onto the highway, you literally felt like you were about to take off on the runway. Yeah. It was awesome. But that's what I'm saying, like feeling like out of touch with the road. <laughs> it was like. Airplane boat. True, yeah. That's felt like I was driving a cruise ship trying to park that thing. Cruise ship, that makes more sense than, airpl <laughs> than airplane boat. Airplane cruise ship. Um, 
So yeah, if you're so if you're associating with I'm going to spend $170 on this pen and I want it to be super glassy smooth, that would be the wrong approach towards these pens. Then you might want to look at something more like a Pilot pen because that's it, how their pens work. I think it will to answer the question feel like a step up from the Safari oh, yeah. from it's it's lightweight the 3776, but oh, it yeah. just, it, it's and, and the quality control and everything is, is phenomenal. I can't think of an issue we've ever had with the, like the construction of these, or even uh, with the nib. It's been incredibly rare to have any QC issue at all. The only thing we've ever had was on some of the past limited editions, the clear ones, there have been some machining marks on the inside of the grip section. That's the only thing we've ever yeah. had, and that was purely because of like the tooling and stuff that was required in the manufacture of those particular pens. But, but that's not an issue with, yeah. these, with the regularly offered ones. Um, Brian in an email said, what's the best way to clean the platinum highlighter and marker tips? Soaking them in water sometimes seems to ruin them. Uh, soaking them is pretty much the method that you do use to clean them. I'm not really familiar with any other type of process. Um, I mean, you're basically, you know, you can flush them, you know, using like a, you know, if you're... Uh, yeah, if you can you're kind of like flush a, them, but... Let's say if you're using like a bulb syringe or something to like really like push yeah, the water through. Yeah, but not the highlighter and markers, though. You're really not going to be able to force much through there. You really have to um, soak. Well, you know, that's why they make replacement tips. Um, yeah, I mean, They're that's, not meant to last years and years like a fountain pen nib. No, they're really not. I'm not saying you have to replace it after every ink color. And I think some colors are more difficult to clean out than others. I think that's more the ticket, is it's going to depend on what ink that you're using in there. Some of the Noodler's highlighter inks, the ones that are bulletproof, uh, like You're the Golden Pig or some of the Dragon ones, mm -hmm. uh, they might be a little more difficult to clean out yeah. versus like Firefly or the Platinum highlighter cartridges themselves. Those mm -hmm. might be a little easier to flush out. Right. You know, again, the more permanent the ink is, the more uh, maintenance it can be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But they do offer replacements, so that would be the route They're to pretty go. affordable, honestly, the replacement yeah. tips. Yeah. Um, Charlie V in an email said, I saw in your newsletter that the ultra extra fine nibs are now available in the Chartres Blue and Bourgogne pens. What about the music nibs? Um, are they coming anytime in these pens? Yeah, right now the music nib is only available in the black um, and has been for quite some time. There's also black with rhodium trim in the music nib only. Uh, we've been told they're coming to the US. I haven't quite seen the confirmation of what date. Um, they were kind of supposed to arrive with the Ultra Extra Fine and didn't, so I'm not quite sure when they should be arriving, but I know they're working on it. Mm. So that's as much as we can give you, and we'll keep you posted from there. Yeah. But that's exciting. We've been, uh, that's, that's been a big question that's come out uh, ever since the, the two colors came out is how, you know, if I want to get these other nib sizes in these pens, right. and they weren't available previously. So it's really exciting mm -hmm. to see them start to bring the other sizes to these colors. Well, it colors. makes sense too. I mean, that's a lot of SKUs for a company to bring in on a brand new color, especially the, the expansive nib offering that they offer for the 3776 line. It's a lot of nibs. Um, John D in an email said, I can't stand all the junk on the Platinum Preppy pen barrel. I've got some of what appear to be preppies in my Noodler's ink bottles, but they don't have any logo of any kind. Can I get these or can I remove the logo from my preppy to look like this? Um, we've been asked about this sometime before. I mean, we're up into like 36 Q and A's now. So I know I've answered this question in a previous Q and A. I honestly couldn't tell you which all one. Right. So we'll answer it again because this is again. a good context for the preppy. Uh, now for Noodlers, the platinum. I know Noodlers is not removing the logo. They are. No, they, they, they've they got to have, have a, some kind of arrangement. I well, mean, they do. The the Noodlers and the Platinum distributor are one and the same in the U S. at least. So I know there's definitely some partnership and some logistics going yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be because there's no way. I mean, it's a free pen that's included with the bottle. There's no way that they're going an extra step to remove all the No, no, I know they're not. They yeah. I believe they're obtaining them before the marking is happening and that's something they're negotiating way up at the manufacturer level, yeah. you know, in Japan. And we we've, we've asked about that before like, "Hey, is that anything we can get?" and they're like, "No." <laughs> it's just something special they're, they're working out with Noodlers. Yeah. So, you know, the only option to buy the you can either get the free pen with the Noodlers ink or mm -hmm. you can buy the preppy with the logoing. It can be done. To remove it, I've it's not of, easy. I've heard of people doing it. There's basically two ways that you can do it. So, I mean, it's got the preppy name and it's got a bunch of, you know, Japanese logoing and, ja and barcoding and stuff. So, 
I've heard of some people that have actually physically been able to sand it away and polish it. That is a pretty laborious process, and you gotta have some pretty fine sandpaper and, and like acrylic end up polish and stuff a like that. You look instead. You could, if you, I mean, you could polish it fine enough where you would be able to do it, but it's gonna take you a couple hours. I'm willing to bet. And on a four dollar pen, is that really worth it? I mean, you you be the judge of that. Um, you could paint it. The other method that I've heard, I mean, that now I think people want like a clear barrel. That's, I'm just saying you can. Uh, sure. I mean, but um, the other method that I've heard is people use using like a chemical to remove it. I'm trying to remember the chemical that people use. It's either- um, Not acetone, right? Acetone will melt the pen. Yeah, you don't so want to do don't that. So don't use that. Um, I, I want to say acetone. it's either rubbing alcohol or uh, denatured alcohol. I don't remember- The thing remember. you want to be careful with that is you might end up it's, getting a, a cloudy look of the plastic. Right, that's basically, when you're looking at a chemical that's going to remove this logoing, it's also probably going to harm the plastic. So you'll have to experiment a little bit on that one. Um, but basically there's no easy way to do that. It probably just isn't worth the time it would take, honestly. Yeah, yeah for some it might be. Um, okay, Arsenal C on Facebook said, Hi Brian, I have a 3776 Century with a fine nib, and sometimes, rarely, it skips on upward motion in straight horizontal lines. This happens with Platinum Blue Black Ink, Diamond Damson, and Diamond Twilight. Only with Diamond Ancient Copper was there no skipping at all, but it is a pretty lubricated ink as it seems. Is the nib supposed to be so dry? My Lamy Safari Extra Fine seems two to three times wetter, but I like a thin line that my Century puts on paper. Any recommendations? Hmm. Quite a specific question. Okay, so um, basically, I'll let you take this one. yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, definitely your pen is going to be writing drier because you know this is a Japanese pen. Pretty That's much all the Japanese manufacturers grind their nibs, especially in the Extra Fine and Fine versions, to be finer than the Europeans do. Like even long. a Safari Extra Fine, the Fine Century might probably going to be, be fine. Yeah, I, I I didn't look that up in the nib nook if if it was like that, but I'm willing to bet that it's going to to be. The Extra Fine Safari just isn't anywhere near as fine as the Japanese go. go. Right, right. I can smell your coffee. It smells really good. Uh, I drank all mine already. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's hard for me to say if based on your rare amount of skipping you're talking about, whether that's that's really normal or not. It sounds like it's probably in kind of the normal acceptable range. Do, One these, thing that, have, do these have a sweet spot like the Lamy 2000? Um, no, not like the Lamy 2000. I mean, the Lamy I mean, 2000 is a pretty narrow sweet spot. I was just wondering. I mean, every pen kind of has its own little sweet spot. It like takes a little angle, bit. Like, yeah. When I say sweet spot, I mean like the angle you're holding it at. Some just the way it makes contact with the paper just yeah and and i run across this every now and then um where and there are definitely a, some pens like the lamy 2000 where it has a reputation for having kind of this finicky little sweet spot because enough people have trouble getting used to it that it's it's kind of a known issue if you will um other things i get random requests like this one or just other kinds of pens you know even metropolitans and stuff that have a really good reputation um th that people say like when i write with it this certain way it tends to skip or does this certain thing and you know i've i've done this with even with people that work here at the goulet shop you know they're like yeah when i do my c this certain way you know it skips and then i so i watch them as they're writing with it and i'm like you're really twisting the pen when you do that kind of yeah. motion or like you really have the pen over rotated in your hand a little bit to the right too much um and so i like take the pen and like rotate it just a hair five degrees or so in their hand and then they do it and they're like oh that fixed it yeah. so it's the blessing and the curse of fountain pens is they are very personal you can get kind of this unique experience from your pens and they kind of write stylistically a little different and you get to kind of get used to them and stuff. But at the same time, if you're just not able to like get the hang of it, it can be a little frustrating with these little things. So I would experiment with the rotation in your hand, maybe your writing angle and stuff, really try some changing some of your pen writing angle and stuff like that to see if maybe that works better. I mean, you're, you're using ancient copper and that seems to be working better in that respect. So Some it could just be are drier yeah. and wetter than others. That's a whole other factor is like the ink to pen relationship. Mm -hmm. Also paper could be a factor. You didn't yep. say anything about the paper that you're using. It could just be that you were using I mean I don't know if this is the case because I didn't get like the full story, but it could have been that you used ancient copper on a more absorbent paper and that was the reason that it didn't skip or whatever is because it was pulling more ink it's out of paper. Say. It's hard for me to say, but that, that could be another factor as well. Um, so if, if 
if all else equal, if that ink is working better for you, use that ink, you know, or like use another ink that, that does work more to your liking. That's part of the benefit of like, we got like 600 different inks, you know, a lot of them are very similar in color, but the properties might be different. It might work differently in your particular pen that you're using. That's, that's another kind of layer of this whole fountain pen thing is you get to try all these different things to get this like perfect writing experience you're going for. Yeah. Um, Richard F. on Facebook said, I got my 3776 with a music nib. Do you know if they plan on offering separate nib units so that if you also want to write in fine, for example, you don't need to buy a whole new 3776? That's, that's a valid point. The, the 3776 used to not have swappable nibs. You actually needed a special right. tool like the distributor had to be able to swap out nibs. The Century, now you can swap out the nib units. Yeah, they had to redesign the whole nib and the way that it fits in the pen and everything when, when they, they went to the cap. slip and seal cap. Uh, and going that route, they went with a friction fit nib and feed that you can actually, you don't need a special tool anymore. You can actually pull that out um, just with your fingers, which, you know, I'd mentioned you know, be careful doing that, sure. um, but you can do that even when you're sort of cleaning the pen. Personally, I like to do that a lot when I clean my pens because it makes it easier. Not necessary every time, but right. But as of right now, they don't offer separate nib units. We haven't heard of any plans. Uh, you know, we'll ask, but yeah, um, no plans as of yet. Yeah, I mean, we we personally like to carry as many things with swappable nibs as possible, um, like you know, Pilot Vanishing Points and Edison pens and Monteverde can do that and Lamy. You know, a lot of different things. Kaweco, you can do that even. Mm -hmm. um, so we like to have these swappable nibs because it's a really cool thing just as, you guys a, options. as a user to, to be able to have, but we don't know of anything in the future for, for Platinum. Uh, Gordon C. on Facebook. Hi, Brian. I've been wondering, since purchasing my first Platinum Preppy pen, are there cartridge inks also available as bottled inks? If so, do you carry that range of inks? More specifically, is there a bottled version of their purple ink? Hmm. I love Noodler's Purple Heart, but it's more muted. Uh, more, it's a more muted hue, and also really enjoy the vibrancy of my Purple Preppy. Alternatively, alternatively, is there a bottled ink from another brand that would work as a close match? PR Plum looks close-ish. Close I can't talk. Based on your ink swabs. Thanks in advance. Really enjoying your Q and A's. So. Okay. Uh, Platinum makes a bunch of colors for their cartridges. Um, you can buy them separately. Actually, each preppy comes with a matching color cartridge. So if you get a red preppy, it'll come with red ink. If you get a purple, it comes with purple ink. And you can also get the cartridges separately. Um, they're bottled ink, so they have two, well, I guess a couple lines of bottled ink. Um, there's the traditional line, which is available in black, blue, black, and red. So those, I believe, fairly closely match up to the cartridges. Um, then they have their mix free line, which I think we'll talk about in a little bit, right? Yep. Um, and then there's the, the pigmented and the carbon series. Um, so to answer your question, no, uh, those other colors of cartridges are not available in the exact same color in bottled form, other than the black and the blue black um, and the red. Yeah. I don't know offhand what would be the closest match. I would say use a swab shop to see. Um, swabbing up cartridges is something we've talked about doing. We just haven't done yet. Yeah. I, 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 I was uh, swabbing up the Lamy Coral cartridges. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I wanted to see that, except I thought that'd be a good idea. I just, I wasn't thinking. I was like, <laughs> I, was, I was just holding it. And I was like, oh, I'm just, because I, I have to do the Q-tip and the, the glass dip pen. So I thought to do it over a trash can, so at least I thought that much through. So I was holding it as taking scissors to cut off the top so that I could, you she know. She did not consult me ahead of time before doing this, by the way. No, Full disclosure. I didn't. Um, <laughs> I, I've taken over the swabs now. So I was holding it as over the trash can, cutting off the top. But as I was, the scissors were like squeezing the plastic, it splattered all up my arm. I don't know how it didn't get on my clothes or the wall or anything. It you got only, lucky. It only got on my arm. But it was like that coral pink color. So it looked like I had this rash on my arm for a couple days. It looked a lot like a of, leper. Yeah, it was pretty I gross. I did. Um, so then <laughs> I was, she told me that I was like, why didn't you just like puncture the cartridge and then ink syringe it out and then you could use it. And she was like, oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Or the person I was with was like, oh, just like dump it. Like once you poke a hole and dump it into a, uh, sample, like a sample file, file or like, something. Like, I mean, that's what um, I did with the rest of the ink. Cause then I was like, what do I do with this? Right. right. So anyway, um, we've been intending to swab up our cartridges is the more of that story. Um, yes. haven't quite had the time to do that yet with all right. the cool stuff I've been working on. Um, but you know, 
that's stuff, something we'll definitely consider. In the meantime, you know, you have it. You can write it out. Use the swab shop to help find your purple, yeah. your, the, your ideal purple. That was a very long story to come to that conclusion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, Mate F on Facebook said, how does the 3776 compare to the Pelican M200 and the Pilot Custom 74? Um, okay, so I've got, I mean, I've been using a Pilot Custom 74 for years as kind of my go-to writer, daily writer. Uh, I have a couple of Pelican M200s, so I've got some experience with those. They're small. They are smaller. So the, these are all similar in price range. Um, the Pelican M200 is the least expensive, but not by much. Um, steel nib. That one is a steel nib. It's a piston fill, too, which mm -hmm. the other two are not. So it's got that going yep. for it. But even still, it's a really small body pen, so even though it's piston fill, it's not a huge ink capacity. Yeah. Um, it's very, the nib very is a, small in your hand. The nib's a lot smaller, too. Mm -hmm. um, the nib is smaller. It's just a smaller pen overall. Quality's still really good. It still writes nicely. Pelicans are um, good. Yeah, but um, the Custom 74, that one's going to be a larger, similar in size to the 3776. Um, smoother nib, softer nib than either of the other two. So it's going to be kind of springy, really smooth. That's part of the why I love that pen so much is the way that it feels when it writes. Um, it's got a larger ink capacity um, than the 3776 does because the, the Custom 74 fits that Pilot Con 70 converter, that kind of push button Bam. converter. Um, it's got fewer nib sizes. <laughs> it's got fewer nib sizes though. It's only fine, medium, and broad, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in the so, US. Yeah, in the US. So you're a little limit. You're you're most limited by the Custom 74 in terms of nib offerings. Me personally, I like the medium, so I don't really care what else is offered. That's my that's my jam. Um, then the 3776, we've already talked a lot about that, but it's got a gold nib. However, it is a stiff nib, mm -hmm. so it's probably the stiffest of the three, actually. Um, not scratchy, but it's an intentionally toothy nib. It's got some feedback on it. Again, it kind of feels like that graphite pencil. It's got a lot of nib options, though. Ultra extra fine, extra fine, fine, soft fine on the black Which does have pen, spring. Which does have spring. It's like too. a semi-flex. It goes from like a fine to a medium or maybe fine to a broad. It's so not a full flex. Not it's a full flex, but it's definitely flex. soft, definitely get line variation. That, right now it's only on the Black Century. I just saw on Putnam's website like yesterday, they are yeah. working to make it available in the other two colors. So the I expect we'll Burgundian see those. Blue. I expect we'll see those later this year in the So US. that's cool. That's cool. They've also had it previously on a couple of the limited edition yeah, it clear varies. models. Yeah, And sometimes it's a soft yeah. medium. It kind of um, varies. Yeah. Um, they've also got the medium, the broad, and then the, the music which is a stub nib basically mm -hmm. on some of their pens, but will be coming out on some of the rest of them. Um, they've got that slip and seal cap on the Century model and some of the other pens um, to keep the ink from drying out. Um, and then they've also got uh, something the other pens don't have is it's got these other exotic materials like the Machier and the celluloids and the ebonites and stuff like that. So you can get kind of these more exotic materials yeah. in the 3776 Beautiful. format. But you're going to pay with those. So you will price pay. is not going to be equal at that point. Correct. Correct. So. Um, on Facebook, again, this person's asked me a bunch of questions. I never know their name. I know like a while back that they told me how to actually pronounce their name, but I lost track of that. So I'm sorry. Um, but, you know uh, who you are. You know who you are. Can I, can I buy 10 <laughs> to 20 preppies at a discount? Uh, I guess I'm about the only person to want 10 to 20 peppers, so it probably won't sell well. You're though. not the only one. You're not the only one. Um, we don't really have like any quantity discounts per se set up on pens. Not because automatically, because you're right. It is. You're not yeah. the only one, but it's not frequent to want to buy that quantity of the same thing. Right. So what we do have set up is the Platinum Preppy Rainbow Set, which is a one of each color mm -hmm. that you can get in the fine or the medium nib. That we have at a discount, so it's twenty four ninety five instead of twenty seven sixty five, which is what it would be. So you're getting like a ten percent discount yeah. on that, basically, with, for seven pens. So you could buy that in whatever quantity you want. If you really want like all of the same color, like we've had some people that have reached out to us before if that are you, buying pens for like they're a teacher and they're buying them for all their students. Yeah, we can we can work like that. with that. Just shoot us an email, yeah. um, info at gulepens.com, and mm -hmm. we can work something out. Yeah, but it's it's, it's not something we have automatically set up because you're right. It's, it's not, not common, common enough for us to you know. Know, kind of clutter up the website with this information that most people wouldn't find pertinent. Um, Eli C. in an email said, is it normal to see ink in the part where I'm holding my platinum preppy and why is this there? So with the preppy and also on the plazier, the plazier it has a clear grip section and you can see the fins of I don't know, what do you call that? The feeder? The feed, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's the long part in the grip section. Mm -hmm. So you can see all these little fins, and sometimes ink does kind of get in that area. Oh, well, it definitely gets up in there. 
Yeah. Not sometimes. I guess it always. Yeah. Does. In fact, I've got the platinum cool right here too that does the same thing. I mean, you can see here that it's like all dark and stuff because those fins have filled up with ink. And basically, what these fins are doing is they're acting as a regulator um, because you've got your ink um, reservoir up here in the pen. You've got this tiny little slit in the feed that you that basically you know encourages capillary action for the ink to feed up to the nib, and then from the feed it mates up to the back of the nib, which then allows it to go through the slit onto your paper. And mm -hmm. the whole thing just works by capillary action through these very small constricted little slits. Um, so the answer is but yes, basically, it's normal. Without these be, fins, can it be cleaned? Well, without these fins, um, you basically would only be able to write but so fast because the capillary action is only going to work but so this fast. This kind of keeps here. more in like reserve. So yeah, it's a reserve, a reservoir basically. So that when you're writing sense. really fast, it's going to draw from here and then when you pause, it's going to fill back up. So it just allows you to, to vary your writing speed and give you consistency. Um, can you clean it out? Yeah, it's a little tougher on the preppy um, be because, um, I don't know, just the nature of the way the thing is designed. When you go to flush this pen out, most of it is going to come, you can actually pull the nib out of this thing pretty easily too. You can just pull it right out. There's the nib and the feed. Um, it's got this hole that basically goes kind of straight through. The, the feed has the slit through here, um, but the fins are kind of separate. It's kind of it's kind of a different design than some of the other fountain pens in that respect. Um, so because of that, it's a little harder to clean the fins out on the preppy than it is uh, on some other pens. So, um, you know, usually what I do if I'm using why don't you put a panel back together? When I'm using it, I'll use a bulb syringe and I'll flush it out. I'll actually take the nib out. And um, as I'm using the bulb syringe to flush out the back, I'll kind of put my finger on here and provide some back pressure. So that, make it so that it kind of is forced to expand into it. That helps a ton. I've never done a video explicitly on Sounds that. Sounds like a good idea. It's been on my to-do list for freaking ever. And I just need to do it one for day. For freaking ever. For freaking ever. That would be legit good stuff right there, let me tell you. All right, Kevin Couple L. more questions. Kevin L. on Facebook. We're, we got, you know, five more questions. We're getting there. Uh, Kevin L. on Facebook. I received a sample of platinum ink in earth brown recently thanks to the efforts of Caitlin and Katie of Goulet Pens. They are first cabin all the way. Yes, they we, really ag are. we agree. We agree. Um, what does the no mix designation mean as far as the ink properties go? And this is funny. Um, it writes great in my X450 and has a great color on paper. Keep up the great work. So, uh, okay, so <laughs> I'm, I alluded to Platinum's ink lines a while ago. One of the lines I have is called Mix Free. It yes. is nine different colors in, you know, 60 mil bottles. Uh, this is where some translation errors have kind of <laughs> occurred. Mix Free, in their minds, means mix freely. Means free to mix. Free to mix. Please meaning, mix these inks. Meaning these inks are designed to be mixed together. Yes. And they even give you like a giant chart. If you buy a bottle, there's a chart included that shows you, you know, the, like the nine colors across, the nine colors here, and all the different combinations. We have a video where you mixed right against my... Uh, I mixed a yellow and a purple, and it kind of made this like you know, rusty red brown I, color, I, I was which like, didn't, wasn't that bad. I, it, it, it turned out better than I expected. I was like, Brian, like yellow and I purple, don't know. really? I don't, you know, whatever. Anyway, so they're designed to be mixed, mixed freely. But in, you know, English, we're thinking mixed free, like meaning, Mixed you know, free, like, you know, toxin free or something like, like free of meaning toxins. don't mix. You know, yeah, so it's, it's um, and, and he was talking about getting a sample too. So this is a totally label that, out of context. This is a label that we would have printed up on the ink sample. So it's literally going to say platinum mix free earth brown or whatever. Meaning don't mix. So it. like don't mm -hmm. mix. So like it's a misunderstanding, Kevin, that you can mix that with other platinum mix free inks. You don't have to. You can use it as a regular ink. Basically, all it means is that the properties of their whole line of mixed free inks are identical. So and you can mix them okay. together and they've, you know, done the colors so that they mix well and come up with some neat combinations. Actually, you they know They don't what? have like seven blues like some other brands, That's you know. How, I said, we, we basically almost answered the next question, which right. is what which is... which is why I put it next. <laughs> what is so special about Platinum Mix Free? So again, the nine colors all designed with identical properties so you can mix together create custom colors so you know as many combinations it's not just right. one to one you could do a one to two or one to three yeah and then there's a dilution liquid which we currently don't have um i really need to order some again yeah for a while we didn't know what it was we're like oh it's just water whatever no it's actually clear ink 
Yeah, um, it's the exact same properties as the other mix-free inks, except it has no dye in it. It's literally just, And one of our customers yeah. educated me on this, and I'm very appreciative, because I was just thinking it was just, oh, it's just like water, just like add water, which you can. You can add distilled water. What that's going to do is going to make gonna it less lighten. saturated. Yeah. It's not going to lighten it as far as like changing from a purple to a lavender right it's right. just going to make it more watery and like less saturated, less saturated yeah. the clear ink will allow it to it's almost like mixing a white allow it to keep the same uh saturation level it just kind of adjusts the color a little bit if that makes sense right. so it's gonna it's gonna have more of the same properties of ink mm -hmm. so as far as like how it flows and the, the you know that sort of thing right Right. So that's that. So Platinum Mix Free is a pretty cool and confusing line. Yes. To conclude. Um, <laughs> Matthew B. on Facebook, how does Carbon Black compare to something like Isaac Newton from Organic Studio? Um, so the Isaac Newton ink from Organic Studio is a pigmented ink, as is Platinum Carbon Black. Mm -hmm. uh, we really haven't done like a side-by-side -side comparison, to be Not completely yet. honest with you. I read some of the reviews on our site. And I mean, Platinum Carbon Black is like the go-to. Like every like watercolor washing, whatever ink Preferred washing by artists artist. that we know swears by Platinum Carbon Black. And it's gonna hold up better for like gloss, like we when we're writing uh, postcards and things out that are a little bit glossy. Uh huh. Um, pigmented inks like the Carbon Black are gonna hold up better on Absolutely. glossy surfaces. Absolutely. It, it's not like it's, photo paper glossy, but no. heavily coated like watercolor paper and stuff like that. Which is different from like Noodler's Bulletproof. Those require mm -hmm. a cellulose reaction, so they actually need to bond with the paper fibers. They need to absorb. They into need to the absorb paper. into the paper fibers to create that waterproofness right. the pigmented inks more sit on top mm -hmm. um, it's just the way you know pigmented base versus dye base they are safe for fountain pens um, they that are. being said you know you They're have more to use maintenance though a little better pen hygiene you don't mm -hmm. want to keep them in your pen too long um, yeah. some of the pens the, the newer Platinum pens are designed for use with, and actually, like uh, some of the pens so come. They ship them with car the carbon right, a pigmented uh, cartridge, cartridge yeah. in it. Um, mm -hmm. Part of it's because of the cap that doesn't dry out. I think that helps with that. Yeah. But they still do require a little. That's more really the thing is you don't want to have pigmented ink dry out in your pen. That's the main issue. It also, you know, some people have commented about it clogging certain pens some and flow stuff issues. like that. That's probably more of a matter of maintenance. You need to clean it out really a lot more regularly. Yeah, you don't want it to sit for a while. Right. And some feeds are probably just too tight mm -hmm. for yeah. the pigments. But as far as like a side-by-side -side comparison between those two, I'm not really sure. Some of the reviews that we have on the organic one is not as good as the platinum one. It's really, it's not going to unseat platinum as yeah, the go-to pigmented ink. Number um, one by, by far. But, you know, you could always get a sample, try them both out, and Absolutely. see which one works better for you. Um, in the home stretch here, Ray G in an email said, I've seen something called the platinum adapter. What the heck is this? So this is what Rachel alluded to earlier in the yeah, video. Yeah, and I've, I've heard rumors it might be discontinued, but, you know, we'll talk about it for now. So I mentioned... <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know it was discontinued. It's a rumor. I, I haven't oh. received confirmation. And I don't, we and, are rumors and, about stuff all the time. And even if it's true, it might take a while till it actually happens. Right. But in the meantime, so I mentioned earlier that platinum cartridge and converters are proprietary, meaning you have to use a platinum converter or platinum cartridge mm -hmm. in the pen. You can't use standard international. However, if you get this lovely little adapter, which is this, this tiny part and it comes with a cartridge. This allows you to have a platinum pen, but use standard international cartridges. I, right. Maybe in theory a converter. I haven't actually tested it. I don't know if it would make it too long. That's a good question. Or maybe uh, maybe a mini converter or something, which I don't know why you'd want to do that. But That's a good question. I don't know why I've never thought like to test that Sounds like a video. Unless it's being discontinued, then what's the point? Wow. Well, but yeah. um, anyway, so if you, um, especially in Europe, Standard National is a lot more more popular. Even the Pilot mm -hmm. Metropolitan comes Standard National instead of... Actually, the, none of the Japanese companies use Standard International. They all have their own proprietary. Platinum, Pilot, Sailor, they all yeah, have their own thing. Yeah, that's true. So if you want to use Standard International uh, With the exception, like, sorry... I know I interrupted. The Pilot Metropolitan in Europe is sold as the Pilot MR. I just said that. You did? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking about other things. <laughs> you interrupted me while I was saying that. So that you could interrupt me to say that yourself. We're such a married couple. Sorry. 
<laughs> so anyway, um, it's about the same cost as a converter. It's really just paying for this little part. It's just Did I mention it's almost the same cost as a converter? I'm sorry, I was just being a jerk. <laughs> it shows there's a little <laughs> diagram on the back. It shows you, you just stick the adapter into your pen and then you stick your short standard international cartridge in. So if you're really into standard international cartridges and you want a platinum pen, it's an adapter that lets you do it. And now I understand why it might be discontinued. <laughs> just, it's it's it kind of expensive for what it is. Well, it, too. Just, it doesn't seem like a popular thing to do. I mean, the platinum, the platinum converter is a pretty decent size. Um, I'll open that up super quick. Sure. Here, you can pop a cartridge out while I'm doing that. I mean, that. I have it on a pen right here. Oh, okay. So there it is. It's a gold one, so it's pretty recognizable from other pen brands. Yeah, and then the cartridge itself, it's it's a pretty decent size. It's a good size cartridge. And it's a hard cartridge, too. Like, you can't squeeze that thing. Yeah, it's gonna be durable. I had, You can gosh, refill those things over and over and over again. There was some cartridge I was using the other day, and I was trying to get it. Maybe it's a water. water it was a water Oh, those fall apart. Oh my gosh, I was trying to squeeze it to get the pen primed, which I know you're not really supposed to do, and now I understand why, because like three squeezes it. in, it cracked and just went all over the place. Same thing happened to Katie with her Waterman cartridges. Like, so the, the Waterman cartridges are a bit flimsy. We actually don't carry those, but it's right. just the ones that came in the pens that we had. Yeah. Anyway, you so that's... You have all these ink mess adventures and stuff. I, I do. Like, I rarely have any kind of an ink spill. You know what? You're a little more experienced than I am. I You've don't been know playing if pens it's just that. More. I think it might just be a awareness issue. <laughs> I definitely have never taken scissors to a cartridge before. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to give you a hard time about that. You know what? It's not something you do every day. I, just, I wasn't thinking. Yeah, I was yeah. really excited. I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I didn't have a syringe on my desk, and I, I, I just wasn't thinking. <laughs> I'm a smart person, I swear. She is. She's very smart. <laughs> You're very smart, honey. I love Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love you, too. Okay, yes. Uh, that's okay. You jab at me all the time, too. It's okay. I do. Um, Last right. question. Last question. Okay, Dennis B. in an email said, uh, do you know when or if the remaining two lakes of Mount Fuji will be given their own platinum 3776 century special editions like the Matosu, the Shoji, and the Sai? Yeah, the Sai uh, we currently have on our site, that's last year's special edition. Yeah. So historically, they've come out in the summer. So basically, uh, there's five lakes around Mount Fuji. That's the mountain we talked about. And they've come out with a special 3776 century in a, uh, they've generally been clear. Um, or there's one that was like a light blue, but very translucent uh, mm -hmm. with rhodium trim instead of gold, a bit more expensive, mm -hmm. uh, numbered. So they're definitely a limited edition. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've come out with three of the lakes so far. So we're like, okay, it's summertime, you know, where's the next one? And like this question came up, I literally had emailed Platinum last week asking, hey, you know, it's June, hey, do you guys up? know? <laughs> Haven't heard back yet. However, I was on Platinum Japan's website yesterday. They literally had just announced that day that they will not be continuing the five this year, but they're introducing a new concept pen for the 3776. It will be announced July 20th, according to their website. Um, I don't know anything about it more than the website says. So I don't mm -hmm. know what they mean by new concept, if it's gonna be, I have no idea. I, I assume, I assume don't it's know. gonna be a different color than something Probably. that's already out, because, you know, that, why would they? It does, I mean, it has to be a different color. But I don't know anything more. It might be resin. It might be a different material. It might, I don't know. Maybe, no maybe it's going to be clear again. They're just going to call it something. I have no idea. Anyway, so we will wait to find out wait, along with you. do you have any idea? I don't. Okay. So we will wait to find out. I just needed to clarify that. We'll wait to find out July 20th. Uh, we'll watch along with you guys on, on the Platinum Japan website, you know, kind of refreshing periodically. See, And then even once it's announced, it's going to take some make time. Sound, make it sound like it's like, uh, you know, some kind of big live event or something I know. It's going to be like, like a that. little like sentence on their like update page. Yeah, yeah. Um, then by the t once it's announced, it then has to make its way into the U.S. So I would, I'm just guessing September. So we would see it here. It's almost not worth speculating. Honestly. I don't know. Who My knows? point is it won't be July. Um, right. So if you have been waiting for the next m lake edition um, in the like the five, it will not be coming out this summer. I don't know if they're going to I don't know if they're going to pick it up like next year, if it's just like a break or if they're like, eh, these aren't doing well. Do you think they would introduce a new thing and do one of these lake ones? No, I don't or think so. Or from the, what the website was saying? It made it, it sound like. It made it sound like they were taking a pause on the lakes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the whole backstory. We, we need to get more clarification. We know as much as the website says. So um, I haven't heard an, an, an answer back from the Platinum Distributor yet. But you know, that's what we know. So yep. to answer your question, the 
Uh, no, it's not planned, but something else will be coming at some point this year. So that would be fun, cool, I guess, I hope. I mean, we'll carry it if it comes. Yeah. Assuming it makes sense, which it probably will. Assuming it makes sense. <laughs> like, you know, this it's... pen doesn't even make sense. <laughs> like, that's not like $2,000 <laughs> for like a block. I was like, because that wouldn't make any sense. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. We'll have to see. We literally have no idea what it could be. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, well, this was fun, honey. I like doing this with you. Thanks. It's fun to do things together. Um, so we, it went a little long, but that's okay. If you like having me here, let me know. If you actually don't like having me here, I won't. Don't be, let her know. <laughs> no, no, I said I won't be personally offended. If you're like, you know what, I really liked it when it just it was just Brian because he was he would stay more on track. Which Who I, the heck would say that? Who the heck would say I really just like it when Brian is sitting there? Well, I mean, and for gabbing like, on by himself. <laughs> Having a stare at his mug for an hour straight. I was going to say, if, like, I, I'm, I'm laughing trying to say this, like, Brian stays on top. <laughs> you can't even say that without laughing. I can't because I know oh you go on tangents. Oh, my gosh. I stay go, on topic. I, go in, I go on tangents, but, man, like, this guy. Well, I, you know what? I would be interested to know from our viewership audience here. With the two of us talking, who do you feel is the general instigator of the tangent? <laughs> because, or maybe we're both equally offensive. And you know what? I know we interrupt each other a lot, so I know that does drive people nuts. <laughs> We've gotten that feedback before that we talk over each other because we we're both so excited. Well, we, we were married. We, we've been together for, what, 13 years almost. It'll be 13 years this yeah. fall. Yeah, and we literally spend like every minute together almost. Okay, not literally. That's okay. We, we spend a lot of time together. We work together every day. Our bathroom breaks are separate, I promise. Yeah, okay, so not <laughs> not literally, but we we literally almost spend- I don't spend go on his bike rides. A lot of our, yeah, we spend a lot of our time together, so we generally know what each other is thinking, except when we're totally not listening to what each other is saying, like I was <laughs> doing interrupt, earlier. Interrupting each interrupter. other. <laughs> we sometimes do that, though. We are both guilty of doing that. We're saying the same thing at the same time and trying to That's because the right. same thought is popping into our heads. So we're not listening to what the other person is saying. And we want to be right. Well, yeah, that too. That's I mean, that's everybody. That's we all it. have that. But I, a lot of the talking over top of each other is because we're we, comfortable. We, we're comfortable and we already know what each other's See? saying. I was, I just we're used to interrupting each other. <laughs> it just doesn't bother <laughs> us. We need to wrap this thing up. Okay, we do. Um, yeah, because our battery is going to die here pretty soon. We're reaching the end. Um, but anyway, this is a lot of fun. That happens when I do this. It's always the battery is about to die. I mean, yeah, it's like a four-year-old battery. And <laughs> if I if I char if I plug in the charger thing, then it has some weird feedback loop with the microphone. The more you explain it, the faster it's going to die. No, it's okay. It gives a warning before <laughs> it dies. So I know when it gives me a warning, it's like, oh, I better wrap this up right now. Or it's gonna Only die. two more tangents. <laughs> right, right. Um, no, I actually have a relevant tangent now to, to give. <laughs> Let's untangent back okay. into orbit here. Okay. Um, next so week. Next week is gonna have open oops, forum. It's gonna be open forum. It's episode thirty-seven, um, and uh, it's gonna be June twenty-seventh. That's when that one will be coming out. Yep. I'm not sure we ever announced this date, June twentieth. That's it's the twentieth. Hey. Yay! Uh, but next week will be the twenty-seventh. <laughs> We're gonna be doing an open forum, which means. I shouldn't have to explain because I've done like 20 of them now. It means you can but ask maybe this any is your question first time. you want. It could be about fountain Maybe pens, this is your first time seeing. It could be about the Goulet Pen Company. It could be about us. It is. You could be about Brian's lava lamp, which people ask every single week. It's not a lava lamp. No, not your lava it's lamp. It's an ooze tube. This is the first time we've had it. It's not going to be dramatic because it takes a long time for it to actually do anything. <laughs> I actually kind of stopped putting in some of the videos because I'm sick of people asking what it is. <laughs> we just need it's really to not like, that big of a deal. We, I guess we need to start selling them. That would just make it easier. No, I'm not going to sell them. You can buy them for like $10 at, you know, goofy office supply stores and just stuff. Just Google Ooze Tube Ooze and you'll tube. find yeah, it. Yeah, you'll find it. Um, anyway, so next week will be an open forum. I've already got some questions lined up, but um, whatever random questions you have about writing stuff or not writing stuff, honestly, um, you can ask it there. You can do it um, in the comments here on YouTube or on Ink Nouveau. You can send an email to GouletQA at GouletPens.com. You can hashtag GouletQA on Twitter, or you can comment on Facebook when we solicit for questions there, which will be like early next week, usually on like Tuesday. That's when we tend to do yeah. it. Tuesday's a good day Tuesday for us to do it. It gives us time to kind of compile the, the questions. <laughs> you know this is fascinating. Yeah, we have young kids, so we're like, ooh, toys. Uh, anyway, so thanks so much for watching. We had a lot of fun with you here today. Um, right on. I hope you... Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I was going to say, I hope you learned some stuff about Platinum. Glad we got to feature some of their stuff. If you have any I mean, questions about Platinum beyond what we did here, just shoot us an email. Uh, we have access to the full line yeah. if you want a special order. Just because it's not on our website doesn't mean we can't get it. Good point. It's Good just point. very expensive to stock everything. So we're right. kind of doing the special order thing. But just right. email us with any questions you have. We are happy to help. Yep. Congratulations for making it through the longest outro that we've ever done on a video ever. Um, Whose fault? Yeah. Whose fault? <laughs> Exactly. I don't know. Exactly. I don't know either. Uh, <laughs> we need but a third party to we're assess. We're both at fault. Let's yes. just agree to agree. Okay. Okay. Agree to agree. I like that. Okay. Um, I, I agree with that, Skins. So, okay. Anyway, have a wonderful week. Uh, and right on. <laughs> so. <laughs>